conservative new media viewers and Jeremy Lin fans around the world. What's going on? We are here to discuss Houston's 100-91 to loss tonight to the Indiana Pacers in Houston, Texas. With the loss, Houston drops to 39-32 and on the season, and their three-game winning streak is snapped. Now, what happened in this game was that early on, Houston wasn't ready for the intensity that Indiana was playing with. What I mean by that is Indiana was playing faster and harder than Houston was, and they just weren't ready to compete with that. Houston wasn't. It's just Indiana was very pumped up and focused for this game, and Houston couldn't match that early on. And later in the game, Houston came back. Houston's bench played great in this game. They really did, and they helped them make this a game and stay in the game, particularly Greg Smith, who had 18 points and 19 rebounds, which is a career high for him. So the bench was terrific in this game, Uh, but the starters not as good. James Harden shot 6 of 24 from the field. He really, really struggled in this game. Jeremy had a tough time early. He had three turnovers, I believe, in the first quarter. He, He struggled early in this game, but he was a lot better in the second half. Um... It's a shame that Houston lost this game, but uh, there's uh, a lot to talk about here. I'm very unhappy. This is the most unhappy I've been the entire year. Forget about the games where I said I want to punch a hole through the wall and all this stuff. No, that's over. There was something that happened in this game late that really made me angry, and, and it involved Jeremy, and I'll talk about it here in a second. And I just... You know, I've tried to be supportive of Kevin McHale, the head coach. I've agreed with a lot of the things that he's done, or they've worked. I don't know if agree might not be the right word. I understand why he's done a number of the things that he's done. And I don't have a problem with him taking Jeremy out relatively early in this game because Jeremy was struggling early. Okay. But what he did late in the game in the fourth quarter really made me upset, truly made me upset. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, Jeremy finished with eight points, one rebound, and four assists. He played only 20 minutes in this game shot three of six from the field, including one of two from three-point range. He was one of one from the free throw line. He had two steals, no block shots, four turnovers, one personal foul. His plus minus was minus 13, and his efficiency number was eight. And, uh, He actually had eight efficiency units in the second half, just to give you a sense of the first half versus the second. Basically, he had zero efficiency for the first half, but he was much better in the second half, particularly the third quarter. Jeremy played 13 minutes in the second half, as compared with Patrick Beverly, who played 11 minutes in the second half. Patrick Beverly did have a good night, particularly in the first half. Beverly finished with nine points, three rebounds, and one assist. He played 28 minutes, so he played eight minutes more than Jeremy did. Beverly's efficiency number was 10 to end the game, and his plus-minus was plus four. So his plus-minus was a lot better than Jeremy's. That just means how many points the team scores compared to the other team when you're on the floor. So if you come in the game and your team's down by 20 points, but when you're on the floor, your your team outscores the other team by four points, even though you still lose by 16 points, 
you're a plus four. So his plus minus was better than Jeremy. Uh, and his overall numbers were a little bit better than Jeremy's. But their efficiency numbers were very close. And Patrick Beverly's efficiency number was only two in the second half. Remember, Jeremy's was eight. So Jeremy outplayed Patrick Beverly in the second half of this game. And that's part of why I'm upset up in terms of what McHale did. And I will say this. Jeremy outplayed both of the point guards for Indiana, George Hill and DJ Augustine, I believe is his name. So even though Jeremy had a tough time early in this game, he still outplayed Indiana's point guards. Now, the reason why I'm really, really upset, and I, I alluded to this in the comment section from the Game 70 video. If you, I, I was on the phone with John for quite a bit of time after this game ended, so that's why I'm starting this late. And I made several notes in the comments saying, I'm upset, and you're going to hear me go off on McHale. What makes me mad was that I honestly believe, and, and this is, I'm not, I can't prove this, I honestly believe that Kevin McHale put Jeremy back into the game with about, what was it, about four minutes and 50 seconds left in the, in the fourth quarter. And at that point, the Rockets were down 11 points, and Indiana had the momentum. I think that Kevin McHale put Jeremy back in the game because he knew the game was over. In other words, what I'm saying is I think McHale thought Indiana had the momentum. They were up by 11 points, and they were going to win. And so I'm going to put Jeremy back in now. Why? Because I know people are going to be mad. And so I want to be able to say that I put Jeremy in and that he played in the fourth quarter even though I know we're not going to win this game. That makes me incredibly angry. Incredibly angry. You didn't give Jeremy a fair shot, but you want to be able to say that you put him in. That's garbage. I, there's a lot of other things I could say and ways I could describe it, but I'm not going to go down that road. I was so upset when Kevin McKeel put Jeremy back in this game, then it, it, it's like a, it's like a setup. Oh yeah, we gave you a chance. Nah, you didn't get it done. That just, I've told you guys, I'll give McKeel a pass when he does something and it works. What felt like happened tonight was he wanted to play Patrick Beverly the whole fourth quarter, but it didn't work. And so once he realized it wasn't going to work, then he put Jeremy in so that he looked like he gave Jeremy a chance whenever the truth was he put Jeremy in when the game was basically over. I don't care if there's five minutes left. If you watch this game and you realized how the momentum was going, this game was over. And that's what makes me mad. If you're going to do something, you better stick with it and stand by it. And Kevin McHale, in my opinion, this is all my opinion. I can't prove this, but it's just the way I felt when I watched this game. Kevin McHale took a coward's way out because he put Jeremy in just to cover his own rear end. He didn't give Jeremy a chance to really affect this game in the fourth quarter but he didn't want to hear people say he didn't put him in. He didn't want to take the heat for not putting Jeremy in. So he put him in just so he could say he put him in. And that, that's bogus. That's the, that's the nicest way I can say it. That really makes me mad. I have more respect for somebody if you do something and you stick with it. You think Patrick Beverly's going to win you the game and keep him in the whole fourth quarter. Don't pretend that you gave Jeremy a chance when you didn't give him a chance. That's garbage. That, I mean, I just, if you could have seen me when he did that, I, I mean, I just, man. It's not right. Man, I've stuck by Kevin McHale. 
with all the stuff he's done this year. And this was garbage. Garbage. Nobody, nobody will convince me anything different about what happened here. I don't want to hear it. I don't care. I don't care. Nobody knows this game better than I do. And, and or very few people. I know what this was, and I know what Mikhail did. I know what I saw, and I know what I felt, and it's wrong. Jeremy was done wrong in this game. I don't think Mikhail will ever admit it, and I'm sure a lot of haters will never admit it. No, no, Jeremy had a chance. There's still five minutes. Hey, right, right. That's right. That's why Kevin McHale did it, so that people could say stuff like that, even if it's not true. I'm um, <sighs> look. This isn't the end of the world. It's a tough loss, and Jeremy was done wrong in this game. I'm just going to say that this was wrong. They set him up to fail in this game. That's what I believe. He didn't play well early. He didn't. He. I understand now. <sighs> why Jeremy has a tough time in big games and in in intense games. The reason why is because Jeremy plays at a fast pace all the time, right? And so when you play in an intense game where everybody else plays faster too, Jeremy doesn't have an extra gear. So in other words, he's maxing out Normally, that's why he gets tired so quickly because he has to play fast because that's one of his advantages. So when everybody plays fast because it's more intense or playoff situation, then Jeremy has more trouble. You know what it's like? It's like the Miami game last year. Miami came into that game and they played all out. They played quick and they played intense, focusing on Jeremy. And Jeremy struggled at that, and that's because everybody played as quick as he did. Now, how's Jeremy going to overcome that? The way Jeremy's going to overcome that is to increase his skill set, is to increase his skill level. Better ball handling, better outside shooting, etc., etc. So that when everybody else plays fast, he can play with more skills. So he can play at different speeds and still have a lot of ability. He can play slower but still be able to score. He can hit the outside jump shot. He can do different things. He can play without the ball a little bit better. It will come. I am completely convinced. I've seen this with other players very good players where they have particular talents and and abilities and then they hit a wall. Jeremy's kind of hit a wall a little bit in terms of that. When When everybody else plays fast like he does and intense, he will get through it. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. But you guys know, I've always been very high on Jeremy's ability. He'll get past this, but he needs experience with it. That's why I said the game against San Antonio, okay, you know, that was like a playoff type of atmosphere, and so was this. Indiana played very hard in this game, and they have the best defense in the NBA, and you saw that tonight. They'll get steals. They'll, you know, they'll they'll make you do turnovers. They'll intercept passes. So the more Jeremy plays in games like this, the more he will adapt and adjust. But it takes time. You don't adjust immediately. And uh, he will adjust. But I did figure out, though, this is why he struggles in those games. Because his advantages go away when everybody else is playing fast and hard like he does most of the time. Um so that's what I saw. I mean, that's what I saw. Look, Jeremy was very good in the second half of this game. Really good in the third quarter. 
really good. I think he had eight efficiency units or, or six in the third quarter. No, he had eight in the third quarter. He he went into the third quarter with an efficiency of minus two. And by the end of the third quarter, his efficiency was six. So he had eight efficiency units in there. I, I don't know if I'm going to do the, the, the quarter by quarter. One, I'm just, I'm angry. I just don't know if I want to do it. Two, there's a more important issue here in what happened in this game. And I you know I like what I said about Mikhail, and I really didn't like what he did. So I don't want that to get lost in the quarter by quarter. And three, you guys are mad and you want to talk. I already can see it in the comments that you left on the Game 70 video. So if I talk less, this video gets done quicker. And I think that we need to be focused on what happened tonight. And and like I said, I really believe that, that Kevin McHale did Jeremy wrong tonight. I, I don't like what he did tonight. And, you know, I could call him McPhail. It doesn't matter. The bottom line was that wasn't the right thing to do tonight. You put Jeremy in a bad spot there, and that's not right. I just don't like it. You don't want to play him in the second quarter or whatever. Okay. I'm good with that. I understand. He had three turnovers early. You want to sit him down and Patrick Beverly help lead a comeback in the second quarter. Okay, cool, cool. I I get it. I do. And I gave Mikhail the benefit of the doubt in, uh, in the San Antonio game. Because Beverly played well and you played him late and you won. Great. Well, you didn't win tonight. And not only did you not win, when you knew you weren't going to win, then you put Jeremy back in just so you could say that you put him in. That's that's wrong, man. I'm sorry. That's, that's not right. You shouldn't do that. And the only reason people do that Again, this is all my opinion. I might be wrong. I'm not in Kevin McHale's head, so this is my observation. I should. I want to say that, make that clear. This is opinion versus hard facts, news reporting. The reason why people do things like that, in English we say CYA, cover your rear end, because you don't want to hear from Jeremy's fans that you didn't play him, and you lost. And that's cowardly. That's cowardly. If you're going to make a decision, you stick with it. Don't do this. It's not fair to Jeremy. It's not fair to his fans. It's not right. It's not right. All right. I'm just going to skip the quarter by quarter. This was a tough loss. It's not the end of the world, as I said. It's not completely unexpected. Indiana is a very good team. They're not a good road team, but they're a very good team, and they match up well with Houston. We knew that we're in the middle of a tough four-game stretch. All of these games are losable, but we beat San Antonio. Okay, we lost tonight. Now we've got two more games at Memphis and then against the Clippers. Both of those games are going to be difficult. Very difficult. We could lose both of those games. Hopefully we won't. It's it's a manageable loss. It is. Even though it's the Lakers won, Utah won, so, you know, we're still not in the playoffs yet. We've got to win. But that's not what this was about. Not in my opinion. Now, people are saying that James Harden kept in. Look, James Harden's going to play a lot of minutes because he's the best scoring option, but James Harden was awful in this game. Brutal. His defense was bad. There was one play that I had in the quarter by quarter, and it just made me so upset. I think it was in the first quarter. Jeremy was on the right-hand side, out by the three-point line, close to the right-hand corner. And James Harden saw him. It was wide open. And instead of passing the ball to Jeremy, Harden took just off-balance brick. You can't play like that. You can't do that consistently and win. 
Now, we give, again, just like I have been with McHale, I give James Harden a lot of leeway. He is a scorer. He is a great player. I let him get away with that sometimes. Not tonight. Harden was terrible tonight. I'm not going to say that Jeremy helped the team win tonight. But to me, this loss is about McHale and James Harden. So you guys want to hear me put it out there about James Harden and Kevin McHale. Tonight's the night. They blew it tonight. Both of them blew it. If you're not making shots, James Harden, give the ball up. Pass it to open guys. Okay? Don't do ISO. Don't do brick turnover ball. And that's what you did tonight. And that's, look, everybody's going to have an off night. Okay? But what Harden did tonight reminds me of what Kobe does when Kobe's bad. He just keeps shooting no matter what. Even if guys are open, even if he's triple teamed, he's just going to keep shooting it. That's stupid. That's not winning basketball. So Harden blew it tonight. He sure did, just like McHale did. As I said, you know what I thought about McHale tonight? Some of the moves worked. You did come back with the bench, including Patrick Beverly in the second quarter. That's good. That's great. Once you knew you weren't going to win, that's when you put Jeremy back in. And that's garbage. Don't do that. Don't do that. I just don't treat Jeremy like that. That's what made me upset tonight. If you think you're going to lose or whatever, put in Aaron Brooks. Don't make Jeremy look stupid like that. That's, you know, you want to win games. That's cool. This wasn't about winning the game. This was about you covering your rear end, in my opinion. That's garbage. That's crap. All right. There's no comments for me to respond to. Most of the comments that were in there were about tonight's game. The only other comment that was in there was some person whose name I'm not going to mention because it, it's uh, you know their name involves a, a profanity came in and was saying oh you you know you're, you're still following that loser Jeremy Lin dude get out of here get out of here nobody wants to hear that why do you think Jeremy's so popular and why do you care if you don't like Jeremy why are you watching this video what you coming in here to try to ruin everybody's party well, don't do that don't do that So, all right. The next game is against the Memphis Grizzlies. That is on Friday, March 29th, 8 p.m. on the East Coast of the United States, which means it'll take place early Saturday morning in Asia, including at 8 a.m. Eastern, uh, 8 a.m. in Taipei, Taiwan. Right now, it's 12.37 a.m. early March 28th, Thursday, which means it is 12.37 p.m. currently on Thursday, March 28th in Taipei, Taiwan. Now, Memphis played tonight, and they got beat by the New York Knicks. They came back in that game, but they were getting crushed in that game. What that means to me is Memphis is going to be mad on Friday, and that means it's going to be a very difficult game for us. I said Indiana is the first best defense in the NBA. Well, Memphis is the second best defense. Could be a tough game. Could be a tough game. Like I said, look, this is the difficult part of the schedule. Hang in there. Things are going to be all right, and they're going to be okay for Jeremy. Even with what happened tonight, you know what I think about it. He will overcome this. As various people have mentioned, Melody Ting, Annie Chang, Blue Bell, people like Jeremy because he overcomes a lot, because he's overcome a lot already, because he's the underdog. That's one of many reasons why people like him. He'll get through this. Even if McHale didn't do what he did at the end of the game, Jeremy still has a lot to learn from this game and what I said earlier about skill sets and 
playing with intensity and playoff type atmosphere and how his game has kind of hit a wall in those situations. So there's a lot for him to learn from this game, regardless of what Mikhail did or didn't do. So that's cool. Like I said, that's that's normal. That happened to Steve Nash. It happened to Tony Parker. It happened to everybody that ever played in this game. It happened to LeBron in the finals two years ago when he couldn't do anything against Dallas. So he'll get beyond this. Yeah, it's been two or three tough games in a row. Haters will be out in full flight. Don't worry about it. Don't listen to them. Don't let them get you down. Jeremy's going to get past this the same way he's got past everything else. And he's going to learn from this. As I said, failure is a better teacher than success. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to how Jeremy comes out, excuse me, in the Memphis game. It's going to be hard for him. They have a good shot blocker. And they have a darn good defense. So points are not going to be easy for Jeremy in that game. But I think we're going to see a good game from him on Friday. And I'm very much looking forward to it. Okay. Your comments below. Thumbs up, thumbs down in this video. Full information in the video description below the video player for game highlights, game stories, and the box score of tonight's game. As well as information how you can come and join the CNM Facebook group which has over 2,000 members and counting. I am Paul at Villarreal. Thanks a lot for watching Conservative New Media. We strive to be the number one Jeremy Lin YouTube fan channel. Like I said, look, I didn't say in that little role out there that I'm the NBA expert. I am the NBA expert. And I can tell you, these games happen. I know what I saw tonight. As far as Kevin McHale and Jeremy Lin in the fourth quarter, nobody's going to tell me anything different. The team's still in good shape for the playoffs. They just need to kind of put this game behind them, get ready for Memphis. And uh, we move on. We move on to game number 72. And I'm, I'll am i be down in the comments. i got to get something to eat, but I will be down in the comments. And I'm very interested to see if other people saw what I saw in terms of what happened with Kevin McHale in this game. So I hope everybody's having a good day or good night, wherever you are around the world when you watch this video. Take care, and we will talk to you soon.